Hi, Yana. I apologize for taking so long to get back to you. It's been a busy couple of days. I had an all-day meeting, and so that's kind of put me behind. So I think I've interpreted your question correctly. Um, I think that you're having trouble with finding the slope, and so I've got a couple of the, uh, the slope questions here, and I'll go through that with you. And also question six, when you're asked to find the coordinates of point C and they give you x equals one. So we'll do that um, a little bit later on, okay? So let's just start, and I want to sort of set this up a little bit differently than what you see in the content for the course. I find that most students find it a little easier to do it the way I'm going to show you, and it makes a lot more sense. One of the reasons it makes a lot more sense is that we have always learned that slope um, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Um, another way to write that would be delta y over delta x, and another way to write that would be rise over run. So up until calculus, all of the slopes that we've calculated have been of straight lines. What's going to change now in calculus, and this is the reason why calculus was actually invented as a, as a separate math, is that we need to find slopes of curves. Obviously with a curve, the slope is different depending on what point you're at moving along the curve. So the slope changes for a curve, whereas for a straight line, it doesn't. It's constant. So in order to find the slope, we're still going to approach it the same way. Um, we're still going to use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or rise over run. So finding the y2 and the y1 and the x2 and the x1 is a, just a little bit more tricky with curves. But I'm going to show you a way to do it that I think you'll find pretty easy. If we look at the first equation, then we need an x1, an x2, a y1, and a y2. Now the way that we find these is we start with what they told us, x1 equals 1, and I got that from the information in the question. We don't actually have a second value for x2. What we have is 1 plus a little bit. And that little bit is the key to calculus. That little h <coughs> just means an infinitesimal amount ahead of the 1. Because what we want to do is pick our second point to be as close as possible to the x value of 1. Because we want the slope right at the point x equals 1. If we make it too big and we picked a number like 2 or something like that, then what we're going to end up with is the slope of a secant and not the slope of a tangent line. And the slope is not going to represent the slope of the curve at that point. So 1 plus h just means 1 plus the tiniest, tiniest little bit that you can imagine. So with y1, we have an equation that says y equals 4x squared. So if I put 1 in there, I get 4 times 1 squared, and that equals 4. So y1 is 4. Now y2, if I do that with the same equation, I have 4x squared, I'm going to have 4 times 1 plus h squared. And if I expand this binomial by doing 1 plus h times 1 plus h, I'll have 4 times 1 plus 2h plus h squared, and that's equal to 4 plus 8h plus eight, uh, 4h squared. Okay. So I highly recommend doing all of this work that I'm going to put a big box around. I highly recommend doing that first, because then your job of finding the slope becomes very easy. We go back to our slope formula, which we had over here, the m formula. Slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, if I put in y2, minus y1, which we know is 4, and on the bottom I'm going to put x2 minus x1, 
then you're going to start to see patterns emerge. And this, these patterns are always true for these types of formulas. The first pattern is that you have a constant at the beginning, a constant at the end, and they always subtract to make zero. So you shouldn't have any constants in the numerator when you're done. The other pattern is that in the denominator, we have 1 minus 1. We're just left with h. That happens every time. So you can actually even skip this step right here and just write h in the denominator and it will always be correct, okay? So 8h plus 4h squared is what we have left in the numerator. Now, to find the slope at just one point, that's where the limb idea, the limit idea comes in. We say the limit as h gets closer and closer and closer to zero. So in other words, as there's a smaller and smaller and smaller difference between the point at x equals 1 and the next point that we're using to find the slope of 8h plus 4h squared over h. If I factor out an h from the top, I have h plus 4h over h, and I can cross out my h's, and that's really important because in this step here, if I let h become 0, I would have a denominator of 0, and that would be undefined. I couldn't get a value, but now that I've eliminated the h's by dividing them out, I just have 8 plus 4h. If I put in h equals 0 now, I'm going to get 8. And that means that the slope of this line at x equals 1 is 8. So that's how we find slope for all of the questions in question 1, is we follow that same procedure. And I really highly recommend that you use this box here and sort out all of the y1, y2, x1, x2 values before you put them into the definition formula. Okay? So give that a try and see if that helps you. And if not, then email me back and I can help you some more on those questions. I'm going to make you a separate video for number six.